good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out to the uh, church sanctuary. This is my favorite place to play in the whole festival, and uh, very, very pleased that uh, Kent was able to squeeze me in between the bands. This song is 50 years old, this modern version. The original version was written in the 1920s by Gus Cannon, and uh, Eric Darling rearranged it in 1963. So, 2013, a half century ago. for the 12 string. There weren't a lot of 12 strings around. He fell in love with Lead Belly's music from the original Folkways recordings, just like I did, and wanted to start playing songs on the 12 string. He went out looking for one, and he couldn't find one in the store. So he went to Gibson Guitar Company and asked them if they'd build a 12 string for him. And as long as they were building one, he said, build two. Because he figured it would take two people playing 12 string to sound like Lead Belly. <laughs> and uh, he uh, got the rooftop singers that he was working with at the time and uh, uh, arranged that Gus Cannon song. So I'm gonna do a song from the, from the singer that made Eric Darling fall in love with a 12 string guitar. And that song became a huge hit in 1963, and suddenly there was a huge market for 12 string guitars. All started by one song. Young comes Rosie, how in the world do you know? I can tell her by her age. Let the midnight special shine as ever loving. 
song that Lead Belly had learned with the same theme of the light shining on me being a symbol of freedom because the idea behind that train song which was also a prison song was every night the midnight special would come by your jail cell and if the light from the front of the train shone on through your cell that was an omen that you'd get uh, paroled the next time you went before the parole board. Lead Belly got that symbol from an old spiritual <coughs> that was sung during the uh, days of the Underground Railroad. <coughs> and the same idea came out of the song called Let the Light from the Lighthouse Shine on Me. And those were not just symbolic lighthouses. They were real lighthouses on the coast of the eastern seaboard that were uh, indicators of whether or not an escaping slave would have sanctuary for the night. So if the light on a, on a lighthouse was on, that meant to the conductor, the Harriet Tubmans of the time, that you could stay the night at a local farm. If the light was turned off, that meant you had to keep traveling north. And those lighthouses have been preserved. National Geographic did a cover story on them 25 years ago in the lighthouses of South Carolina. So when Lead Belly learned the song in church, he sang a song that was actually sung by escaping slaves. And he said they sang it different ways in different churches. In the Baptist church, they sang it as a slow hymn, what he called a line out hymn. You sing a line and then the chorus sings a line back. He said in the Methodist church, they sang it with a little rhythm and it uh, picked up in speed. But he said if you wanted to hear it really sung right, you had to hear the Holy Rollers sing it. And that's what he called Rock Church. And Lead Belly called that Rock Church uh, 25 years before Alan Freed used the term rock and roll to describe music that came out of the African American music tradition. So here's the song Lead Belly did. I want you all to sing this one with me too. Let it shine on me. Let it shine on me. Let the light from the light Let it 
special for just one more verse. Pete Seeger wrote this at the end of the song. A Mr. Hewdy led better. He was a mighty fine man. You know he sang this song throughout his great wide land. Now he's done with all his grieving. Hope and hollering and crying. And he's done with all his studying. About his great long time at the midnight special Everybody shine his light on me Oh, let the midnight special Shine its ever-loving light on me 